Impassive solar building design, windows, walls, and floors are made to collect, store, and distribute solar energy in the form of heat in the winter and reject solar heat in the summer. This is called passive solar design because, unlike active solar heating systems, it does not involve the use of mechanical and electrical devices. The key to design a passive solar building is to best take advantage of the local climate performance an accurate site analysis. Elements to be considered include window placement and size, and glazing type, thermal insulation, thermal mass, and shading. Passive solar design techniques can be applied most easily to new buildings, but existing buildings can be adapted or retrofitted. Passive energy gain. Passive solar technologies use sunlight without active mechanical systems. Such technologies convert sunlight into usable heat, cause air movement for ventilating, or future use, with little use of other energy sources. A common example is a solarium on the equator side of a building. Passive cooling is the use of the same design principles to reduce summer cooling requirements. Some passive systems use a small amount of conventional energy to control dampers, shutters, night insulation, and other devices that enhance solar energy collection, storage, and use, and reduce undesirable heat transfer. Passive solar technologies include direct and indirect solar gain for space heating, solar water heating systems based on the thermosiphon, use of thermal mass and phase change materials for slowing indoor air temperature swings, solar cookers, the solar chimney for enhancing natural ventilation, and earth sheltering. More widely, passive solar technologies include the solar furnace and solar forge, but these typically require some external energy for aligning the concentrating mirrors or receivers, and historically have not proven to be practical or cost-effective for widespread use. Low-grade energy needs, such as space and water heating, have proven, over time, to be better applications for passive use of solar solar energy. As a science, the scientific basis for passive solar building design has been developed from a combination of climatology, thermodynamics, convection, and electromagnetic radiation, fluid mechanics, natural convection, and human thermal comfort based on heat index, psychrometrics and enthalpy control for buildings to be inhabited by humans or animals, sunrooms, solariums, and greenhouses for raising plants. Specific attention is divided into the site, location and solar orientation of the building, locals unpathed the prevailing level of insulation, design and construction, quality, materials, placement, size, type of windows and walls, and incorporation of solar energy storing thermal mass with heat capacity. While these considerations may be directed toward any building, achieving an ideal optimized cost performance solution requires careful, holistic, system integration engineering of these scientific principles. Modern refinements through computer modeling and application of decades of lessons learned can achieve significant energy savings and reduction of environmental damage without sacrificing functionality or aesthetics. In fact, passive solar design features such as a greenhouse, sunroom, solarium can greatly enhance the livability, daylight views, and value of a home at a low cost per unit of space. Much has been learned about passive solar building design since the 1970s energy crisis. Many unscientific, intuition-based expensive construction experiments have attempted and failed to achieve zero energy, the total elimination of heating and cooling, energy bills. Passive solar building construction may not be difficult or expensive, but the scientific passive solar building design is a non trivial engineering effort that requires significant study of previous counterintuitive lessons learned, and time to enter, evaluate, and iteratively refine the simulation input and output. One of the most useful post-construction evaluations
evaluation tools has been the use of thermography using digital thermal imaging cameras for a formal, quantitative scientific energy audit. Thermal imaging can be used to document areas of poor thermal performance such as the negative thermal impact of roof-angled glass or a skylight on a cold winter night a hot summer day. The scientific lessons learned over the last three decades have been captured in sophisticated comprehensive building energy simulation computer software systems. Scientific passive solar building design with quantitative cost-benefit product optimization is not easy for a novice. The level of complexity has resulted in ongoing bad architecture, a many intuition based unscientific construction experiments that disappoint the designers and waste a significant portion of the construction budget on inappropriate ideas. The economic motivation for scientific design and engineering is significant. If it had been applied comprehensively to new building construction beginning in 1980, America could be saving over $250 million per year on expensive energy and related pollution today. Since 1979, passive solar building design has been a critical element of achieving zero energy by education institution experiments, and governments around the world, including the U.S. Department of Energy, and the energy research scientists that they have supported for decades. The cost-effective proof-of-concept was established decades ago, but cultural assimilation into architecture, construction trades, and building owner decision-making has been very slow and difficult to change. The new terms architectural science and architectural technology are being added to some schools of architecture, with a future goal of teaching the above scientific and energy engineering principles. The solar path in passive design, the ability to achieve these goals simultaneously is fundamentally dependent on the seasonal variations in the sun's path throughout the day. This occurs as a result of the inclination of the Earth's axis of rotation in relation to its orbit. The sun path is unique for any given latitude. In northern hemisphere non-tropical latitudes farther than 23.5 degrees from the equator, the sun will reach its highest point toward the south. As winter solstice approaches, the angle at which the sun rises and sets progressively moves further toward the south and the daylight hours will become shorter. The opposite is noted in summer where the sun will rise and set further toward the north and the daylight hours will lengthen. The converse is observed in the southern hemisphere, but the sun rises to the east and sets toward the west regardless of which hemisphere you are in. In equatorial regions at less than 23.5 degrees, the position of the sun at solar noon will oscillate from north to south and back again during the year. In regions closer than 23.5 degrees from either north north of South Pole. During summer the sun will trace a complete circle in the sky without setting whilst it will never appear above the horizon six months later. During the height of winter, the 47 degree difference in the altitude of the sun at solar noon between winter and summer forms the basis of passive solar design. This information is combined with local climatic data heating and cooling requirements to determine at what time of the year solar again will be beneficial for thermal comfort, and when it should be blocked with shading, by strategic placement of items such as glazing and shading devices, the percent of solar gain entering a building can be controlled throughout the year. One passive solar sun path design problem is that although the sun is in the same relative position six weeks before and six weeks after the solstice, due to thermal lag for the thermal mass of the Earth, the temperature and solar gain requirements are quite different before and after the summer or winter solstice. Movable shutters, shades, shade screens, or window quilts can accommodate eight a day an hour to our solar gain and insulation requirements. Careful arrangement of rooms 
completes the passive solar design. A common recommendation for residential dwellings is to place living areas facing solar noon and sleeping quarters on the opposite side. A heliodon is a traditional movable light device used by architects and designers to help models unpath effects. In modern times, 3D computer graphics can visually simulate this data and calculate performance predictions. Passive solar heat transfer principles. Personal thermal comfort is a function of personal health factors, ambient air temperature, mean radiant temperature, air movement and relative humidity. Heat transfer in buildings occurs through convection, conduction, and thermal radiation through roof, walls, floor and windows. Convective heat transfer Convective heat transfer can be beneficial or detrimental. Uncontrolled air infiltration from poor weatherization, weather stripping, draft proofing can contribute up to 40% of heat loss during winter. However, strategic placement of operable windows of vents can enhance convection, cross ventilation, and summer cooling when the outside air is of a comfortable temperature and relative humidity. Filtered energy recovery ventilation systems may be useful to eliminate undesirable humidity, dust, pollen, and microorganisms in unfiltered ventilation air. Natural convection causing rising warm air and falling cooler air can result in an uneven stratification of heat. This may cause uncomfortable variations in temperature in the upper and lower condition space, serve as a method of venting hot air or be designed in as a natural convection airflow loop for passive solar heat distribution and temperature equalization. Natural human cooling by perspiration and evaporation may be facilitated through natural or force convective air movement by fans, but ceiling fans can disturb the stratified insulating air layers at the top of a room and accelerate heat transfer from a hot attic or through nearby windows. In addition, high relative humidity inhibits evaporative cooling by humans. Radiative heat transfer. The main source of heat transfer is radiant energy, and the primary source is the sun. Solar radiation occurs predominantly through the roof and windows. Thermal radiation moves from a warmer surface to a cooler one. Roofs receive the majority of the solar radiation delivered to a house. A cool roof, or green roof in addition to a radiant barrier can help prevent your attic from becoming hotter than the peak summer outdoor air temperature. Windows are a radiant predictable site for thermal radiation. Energy from radiation can move into a window in the daytime, and out of the same window at night. Radiation uses photons to transmit electromagnetic waves through a vacuum, or translucent medium. Solar heat gain can be significant even on cold, clear days. Solar heat gain through windows can be reduced by insulated glazing, shading, and orientation. Windows are particularly difficult to insulate compared to roof and walls. Convective heat transfer through and around window coverings also degrade its insulation properties. When shading windows, external shading is more effective at reducing heat gain than internal window coverings. Western and eastern sun can provide warmth and lighting, but are vulnerable to overheating in summer if not shaded. In contrast, the low midday sun readily admits light and warmth during the winter, but can be easily shaded with appropriate length overhangs or angled louvers during summer and leaf-bearing summer shade trees which share their leaves in the fall. The amount of radiant heat received is related to the location latitude, altitude, cloud cover and seasonal hourly angle of incidence. Another passive solar design principle is that thermal energy can be stored in certain building materials and released again when heat gain eases to stabilize diurnal temperature variations. The complex interaction of thermodynamic principles can be counterintuitive for first-time designers. Precise computer modeling can help avoid costly construction experiments. 
site-specific considerations during design, latitude, sun path, and insulation. Seasonal variations in solar gain e. G. Cooling a heating degree days, solar insulation, humidity, diurnal variations in temperature, microclimate details related to breezes, humidity, vegetation and land contour, obstructions, overshadowing, to solar gain a local crosswinds. Design elements for residential buildings in temperate climates, placement of room types, internal doors and walls, and equipment in the house. Orienting the building to face the equator, extending the building dimension along the east-west axis, adequately sizing windows to face the midday sun in the winter, and be shaded in the summer, minimizing windows on other sides, especially western windows. Erecting correctly sized latitude-specific roof overhangs, or shading elements, using the appropriate amount and type of insulation including radiant barriers and bulk insulation to minimize seasonal excessive heat gain or loss, using thermal mass to store excess solar energy during the winter day. The precise amount of equator-facing glass and thermal mass should be based on careful consideration of latitude, altitude, altitude, climatic conditions, and heating, cooling degree day requirements. Factors that can degrade thermal performance, deviation from ideal orientation and north, south, east, west aspect ratio, excessive glass area resulting in overheating and heat loss when ambient air temperatures fall, installing glazing where solar gain during the day and thermal losses during the night cannot be controlled easily e.g. west facing, angled glazing, skylights. Thermal losses through non-insulated or unprotected glazing, lack of adequate shading during seasonal periods of high solar gain, incorrect application of thermal mass to modulate daily temperature variations, open staircases leading to unequal distribution of warm air between upper and lower floors as warm air rises, high building surface area at a volume, too many corners. Inadequate weatherization leading to high air infiltration, lack of or incorrectly installed radiant barriers during the hot season, insulation materials that are not matched to the main mode of heat transfer, efficiency and economics of passive solar heating. Technically, PSH is highly efficient. Direct gain systems can utilize 65 to 70 percent of the energy of solar radiation that strikes the aperture collector. Passive solar fraction is the percentage of the required heat load met by PSH and hence represents potential reduction in heating costs. Rescreen International has reported a PSF of 20 to 50 percent within the field of sustainability. Energy conservation even of the order of 15% is considered substantial. Other sources report the following PSFs, 5 to 25% for modest systems, 40% for highly optimized systems, up to 75% for very intense systems. In favorable climates such as the southwest United States, highly optimized systems can exceed 75% PSF. For more information see Solar Air Heat.